everybody this is Eric Honda here welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of storied sorties this is uh, as you can see this is actually the third video in the series and I'm proud to say I finally have a title thanks to my friend zombie airman uh, with storied sorties uh, let me know what you guys think of the title down below or on my Twitter uh, I think it, it works pretty well since um, I know I'm going to be doing tank models and other models too, but story stories I think fits for the time being and I don't see any problem since I am Air Force and the channel is called Air Conda, I think story stories is perfect. So I do want to say thank you to Zombie Airman for coming up with that. So thank you very much, buddy. I do appreciate it and I miss you big time. Miss you, miss you, buddy. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to... Um, and go ahead and get started. I'm not going to try to drag this out too long because I want to focus more on model building this time since I was, had almost way too much stock in there at the time and didn't really get into the build. But the previous two videos, I talked about my career in the Air Force and how I got to where I, what I am now. Well, not really where I am now, but how I ended up getting into the, um, to the Air Force in the first place and why I plan to stay until I retire. So I think today we're going to focus more on the C-130. I know I kind of gave a brief intro into, that's flat black, I don't need that one, uh, an intro into the C-130 and then I'm kind of done with that. I'm going to move on and do um, kind of some history behind the C-130. That's all of drab. This is flat black. This isn't it, is it? I'm going to, I'm going to. Uh, crap. Yep, there it is. Okay, this is the one I want. Um, the one of the first things I'm going to do before I get too much into continuing to build this uh, this kit is I'm going to work on I'm going to paint the disc behind the cockpit. I'm kind of it's kind of weird that's got to drop down like that. And this is going to be interesting since they've already glued it in, so I'm going to be careful. I'm trying not. In fact, the brush I'm about to use is probably not the best brush to use for this. So let me mix this up real quick and then I'll grab, oh goodness, sorry for all the noise. I'll grab some of the other brushes. I think the smaller one, the smaller tip one would be better for this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and dump some of this paintbrush thinner. But what I plan to do for today's video is I'm going to read a little story oh crap well wonder how that's gonna work on a mouse pad i just dumped some paintbrush thinner paint thinner on the mouse pad because i'm really bad at this but uh i'm yeah i'm gonna read a story about the c-130 off of a uh, popular mechanics's website uh, it's kind of like one of the original stories back when the c-130 first started uh, and I figured you guys get a kick out of it. And if I finish the story before um, the 30 minute mark, then I guess we'll just go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm going to try to 30 minutes or less is the goal. But if I, if I finish the story before that 30 minute mark, then we will go ahead and fill in the gaps with some other stories. But for now, I'm going to focus on painting. Um, so forgive me because of the angle this is at. I'm going to do it from here instead to make sure um oh crap what did i just touch with this yeah that's fine it's underneath the cockpit i'm gonna go ahead you know what this isn't gonna work because i need primer it's okay there we go um and this story i think is a pretty cool story it's not like the most incredible thing in the world and it may not mean anything to anybody who doesn't know a whole lot about aircraft but um because it's more talk about the capabilities of the c-130 as a cargo plane uh, but and then i figured it'd be a, still a neat story to tell and it kind of gives you the idea of why the c-1 i like the c-130 so much yeah, this was not a good idea. I didn't put any primer on this, and I know that's a foul, but I guess I could have sprayed this a little sooner, but I didn't. I'll make it work. I just And it's actually kind of good that I'm trying this out on the inside of the plane first. So I, I can kind of get used to 
painting, I guess. And figure out where mistakes, oops, like that. Figure out where mistakes are going to be made and try not to repeat them on the outside where you're, it would be more noticeable. But this story's actually come back, uh, it's from Vietnam. Um, it's during, uh, I think it's the, the, the pullout of Vietnam when we uh, basically said we're done. We're done here. We're not doing this anymore. You don't want it. A lot of you don't want us here. Our own people don't want us here. Uh, a lot of soldiers were drafted into this, so they don't want to be here. All right, so we're going to let that dry a little bit, and then I'll add like another layer to kind of hide some of my sticks. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and clean this off. Maybe. Possibly. No. And that didn't work out at all. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Go ahead and clean this brush off. Um, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and read the first paragraph of this before I get into where did I put the instructions for this? On the floor. That's a fantastic place for them. Um, yeah. That's a little sloppy, but I'm going to read the first paragraph and then I'm going to go ahead and pick up the instructions and see where we left off. As you guys remember for the other two videos, we installed the wheel well, the internal wheel wells, part of the cockpit, uh, the, the wall between the cockpit. And yeah, you see my amazing paint job right there. Uh, forgive me, I can't tell how well the lighting looks. I actually have two desk lamps here and here um, to help out with this. So hopefully it looks better for you guys. But I can't tell how it looks because the light desk lamps are so bright for me that I don't know how it looks because it's like dimming my screen. But anyway, um, I think we got the cargo ramp, the cargo floor in there. So uh, we're gonna see what's next after this. But uh, let's go ahead. This article's uh, I'll post a link for the article down below in the description of the video, and it's called the it's uh, the title is why the C-130 is such a badass plane, and this was written by Eric. Tegler back in 2017 April 21st I, I'm gonna give credit where credit is due so I'm not stealing credit for anything but it, uh, the first paragraph of the article is amidst the chaotic withdrawal of American forces from Saigon in April 1975 a young man in South Vietnam Air Force uh, I'm gonna butcher this guy's name I'm gonna probably I'll put I'll have text pop up to say what it is Tend Nguyen Peered out from a bunker at Tan Son Nyot Air Base. I'm probably pronounced that wrong too. The airfield had been under North Vietnamese mortar fire all night and more than 100 aircraft had been destroyed, but there was still one flyable C 130A, the initial production version. So the C 130A is the. Um, I'm going to actually pop up a picture if I can find one. I didn't think about looking that up, but if I can find one, I'll show you a picture of what the C 130A it looks like since it's supposed to be the original production. The C-130, oh, that is very bubbly. I'm uh, making it worse because it's already got tacky. Fantastic. Anyway, um, but and, and as the so this sorry I lost my train of thought. The C C-130A is the original production of the C-130's Hercules, and this is a C-130J30. In case anybody hasn't. Realize um, if they're joining us late into the series, well, late like two video, three videos late. This is a C-130J Super Hercules, J-30 Super Hercules. And C-130A is the original production of the C-130 Hercules. But uh, during a lull in the firing, it taxied toward the runway, navigating around smoke, and the smoking debris. The massive plane's rear ramp was still open, with a crowd of people huddling on it, huddling on it, and New Gen knew he had to get to it it was either leave right then or stay and get killed they got a picture of the uh, c-130 hercules flying along the south vietnamese coast it looks like an older one so that might be the c-130a it's got a really cool camo pattern on it um i'll have to include kind of a clip in there all right so that went kind of right through that the glue the paint's gotten oh goodness a little tacky uh, it should be good to get back into the instruction manual. Last time we were doing the model kit build, I accidentally dumped glue on this. So, thankfully, it did not glue the pages together. 
So we did the cargo ramp, we get, did that. Ooh, pieces 71 and 94 are next, and it's going on this piece right here. And they're kind of small, so this is gonna be interesting. I'm gonna go ahead and fold this in half. I'm running out of desk space. I, I need a better recording setup for model kit building. And I do have the deck. I was gonna look on the floor for the piece. Uh, should be, oh, what are the pieces? 71 and 94. Um, it's gonna be not on one of the pages of our, our repeat panels I've already got loose, so that's that's awesome. So I'm gonna have to cut open another bag. Uh, nope, not here. Probably should. You know what? Maybe in future videos I will preemptively get pieces ready, so I'm not wasting a whole lot of time looking for it in here. Uh, 94. Found 94. And you know what I forgot to pull up? All right, I gotta get all this empty plastic bags out of here. Forgot to pull up my model kit, tool kit, or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, get my clippers out. And I'm actually gonna leave this out because I might need it later. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, very gently, cut this piece out. There we go. This is gonna be interesting. I might have to file the nubs down off this thing. Cause I don't, oh. My luck is I'm gonna end up losing one of these pieces. I should probably cover the paint that's sitting in the hot table, the desk lamps. So it's not like drying solid on me. I've done that before in the past when I f first attempted to model kit build. Okay, that's not too bad. I was able to cut pretty close to it. Um, I'll get the glue. Uh, while I get this ready, uh, the rest of the story goes on to say, with others, he made a desperate dash for the bunker, from the bunker towards the lurching C-130. Every time the pilot jammed on the brake, it pushed the passengers forward, Nugent told Fox News in 2014. He created more space in the back, so I jumped in. Everybody jumped in. And a few minutes after that, the ramp door closed. Design, so they're... Um, the important thing is to realize how much the C-130 is, is actually supposed to carry, and they're going to get into that. So it says, designed to carry only 90 paratroopers, the Hercules belly was bursting with far more than that. Its lone pilot, a Vietnamese Air Force major, pushed its four Allison T-56 turboprops to, the full, to full throttle and began his takeoff down the 10,000 foot runway. At the opposite end of the runway, the airplane still hadn't taken wing. And much, in case you guys didn't know, taking wing means taking off. Why did I put that back on? I need, let's get, get these pieces over here. Um, that's a stupid thing. Okay, there we go. All right, my fingers are about to get sticky. You know what? There's pliers in that kit for a reason. I should probably use it more. Let's use these. I think these pli pliers would be the better ones to use. I got glue in my fingers, so now everything's sticking to my fingers. Uh, slide that over there. Uh, this could be interesting. This piece of lint stuck to this. I'm going to show you guys how tiny this piece is. Uh, those who are seasoned veteran builders probably have an idea how tiny. Ooh, this is not working out that well. I might be better off using my fat fingers. Right there. Okay. That piece is like, eh, is it going to focus? No, not really. It's too tiny to focus. Let's see if the GoPro can pick it up a little better. Let me see. Kind of. There you go. There you go. Look how tiny that piece is. And I am not the most graceful with things like this, but I, I'll survive. I'll figure it out. How this, ooh, I didn't even pay attention to how this piece goes in there. But yeah, the C-130 is like, it's a beast. It it can just soar without issues at all. Um, it, it takes a lot to get that thing down. It's like the 
A-10 Warthog of the cargo plane world, in my personal opinion. Um, I'm sure other enthusiasts would disagree. Uh, I don't I don't know of any other aircraft, uh, cargo plane, at least in the US military, that can compete with it really. Make sure I got the piece right there. Just gonna make sure it is level. Well, the glue sets too much. Okay, push down on it pretty tight. Um, but yeah, as the story goes on, it says um, designed to carry only 90 paratroopers. The Hercules belly. I already said all that part. And it says, but in the runway's thousand foot overrun, the C-130 staggered into the air. After a har harrowing flight, it touched down in three and a half hours later at Yu Tapao Royal Thai Air Base, southeast of Bangkok. On the ramp, American personnel were visibly surprised as they watched 452 people disembark. Keep that, so they said this was only designed to carry 90 paratroopers, but it was able to carry 450 people from Vietnam, South Vietnam to Thailand, 452. And they continue to say with the Herculean effort, the C-130 had lifted more than 20,000 pounds above its operational limit. That, that right there is amazing, in my opinion. That's just incredible. Um, 20,000 pounds, it's not 2,000 pounds, 20,000 pounds over its operational limit. And it was able to lift it like it was nothing. Um, now we're going to get, before I let this video get on too much longer, I'm going to go ahead and get the next piece, which is piece 71. It's going to go on the same, same place. That's 80. Those are duplicate pieces. It's going to be a piece. It, that's seven. And that's cargo ramp pieces. 14, 17, 12. More 80s, not in there. Is it on this one? It's on this one, isn't it? It's on in this pack right here. I'm getting nervous when I deal with small pieces like this. I'm using this exacto knife more for um, opening up plastic bags in hand to actually cut the pieces out. That's fine. On to find somebody one will kind of continue on the story. Um, I think I mentioned in previous videos that I've actually ridden on a C-130 when I had to go from, excuse me, Al uh, Al Air Base in Qatar. Um, I spent one night in Qatar after we landed there from, uh, I think we landed there from Thailand. I have not seen the piece I need. I had to miss it somewhere. Is it 71? Are they sure it's 71? No, this is empty, so it's not on here. Go ahead, I guess, throw that over there so it's not... It's bad enough, I'm gonna have to go looking through this. And I thought, I thought it was really cool. I mean, it's a simple thing. Uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't be super thrilled. Oh, there it is, it's in this bag. Open up the wrong bag. Super thrilled about something like that, but like I said, I'm kind of an aircraft nerd. I enjoy, especially military aircraft. Uh, this not really, ah, there we go. I cut myself for the first time. It's not really a whole lot of civilian aircraft that I get super excited about. I didn't really cut myself, kind of poke myself a little bit in there. Okay, where is that? There it is. Let's go ahead and get the clippers out. And I'm gonna do it over the paper towel. Set that back in there. And this piece is going to go at the edge. Uh, this tiny little piece. Let's see if you guys get that in focus right there. There you go. Kind of has uh, a little hole in the tip. I don't know if that's being picked up. Uh, it's going to go right here on this fuselage. Um, in fact, let me make sure I get this right. The hole is supposed to be facing out, so that means that flat piece. I'm gonna have to use my fingers to do this. There's no way I'm gonna be able to use pliers. 
Our tweezers is a shed. Right, paint. And I'm gonna glue it right in here. Make sure I get a good amount of glue on this thing so I don't have to worry about this falling off later on. Okay. I'm probably, what I'm gonna end up using the nail files for in the kit I have is to probably scrape off. Did I do this backwards? It looks, it looks like it should, yeah, I'm gonna have to scrape some of that glue off. I don't know how else, I mean, that makes no sense. Does there a slot on the other side? No, so I don't understand why they did that. Like, it's already there on this side. I have to install it here. Is it just because it's a little different? Okay. Get it in there. Probably should clean this piece up a little bit, but that's that's where it is now. Right in there. It's got a, an annoying little gap that... Can I, is it too set in there? Am I going to be able to get this off? No, it's on there pretty good. All right, well, that's what I get for that. Let's continue on with the story. Um, the C-130 has been a lifesaver during its six-decade history. It's been a death bringer, bringing, bring, bringing, pff, bringer, death bringer. Holy crap, I don't know why it's so hard for me to say that. C-130 has been a lifesaver during its six-decade history, and it's been a death bringer, too. With a squat stance, bulbous nose, four big turboprop engines, and massive fuselage, the C-130 cruises at a relatively modest 290 to 320 knots. Lockheed dubbed it Hercules after the mythological hero known for its strength and courage. The name fits this company's tradition of naming aircraft after celestial constellations along with the P-2V Neptune and the P-3 Orion. Compared to high-profile jet fighters, the F-22 Raptor or the F-35 Lightning II, the Hercules looks like a bloated throwback, but what it lacks in sleekness, it more than makes up for it in heart. And that's one of the reasons why I like this thing so much, um, is because it's just like the A-10. It's old, rustic, rugged-looking, ugly, as all can be, but it's a beautiful ugly, and I would not have it any other way. Oh, we're about to glue the fuselages back together. All right, together. Interesting. Uh, do I want to do that? How's this look? That dries fast. Yeah, I kind of messed it up a little bit. I'm gonna. That's what I get for trying to touch it up. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that little gap area though. Um, but yeah, and it's it's a old classic looking aircraft. It looks rugged, sturdy, ugly, just like the A10. And th there you go. I, if, if I kept reading it. I would have seen, like the A-10 Warhog, it's the Hercules awesome capability that makes it a total badass. Simply put, the C-130 is a do-anything aircraft and its service record shows it. Lockheed says the C-130 has flown at least 100 different missions in its 63-year-old life, including its most recent return to the military limelight. They're going to have, oh, this is an MC-130, I believe that is the Marines version of the C-130. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, you're here to watch model kit building as much as you're here to listen to me tell story. Oh, no, I wanted to touch that up with some paint real quick. Uh, hear me tell some stories. So let me do some more model kit building. Uh, how did I lose? There it is. That's black. Go gray. That's what I wanted. Let's just stick it up, shake it up a little bit more. Um, so let me give it to you some model kit building too. How? How did that happen? My fingers gonna be covered in paint. It's gonna be gross. Uh oh. Okay. Well, whatever. I'll fix that later. Uh, it's video. Yeah, wow, that was bad. Why? Why did I? I need to learn. Just let the stupid thing dry. Go back in there and touch it up after you've let it dry. I don't, you probably like why are you painting that it's not that big a deal it's gonna bother me since the windshield that they gave is see-through 
And if I don't at least make an attempt to paint this, I mean, I guess I can go in there because I won't have the, uh, the windshield on yet because it doesn't, no, it hasn't got me putting the windshield on. But at least I can try to get the areas that will be really hard for me to reach if the windshield's in there. Um, All right, I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to stop trying to push my lug. And then I can try touching up anything that might be visible after the windshield's been installed. That, well, after the fuselage is put together. Um, I'll probably use them. These are the brushes that came with the aircraft when I bought it. But uh, we'll go ahead and glue, glue the fuselages together. And then we'll go and read a little more about the C-130 as per popular mechanics. Popular mechanics, right? I don't know. Okay, that's 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 got to be fixed. Come on, there you go. Stupid thing. Comes out easy, but it doesn't go in easy. Apparently, <laughs> joke could be made there, but I'll be good. Um, I've, I've I mean, when I flew to Iraq, that was obviously not the first time I've been inside AC 130s I, I've been inside the C-130 during some air shows and stuff but that's not as exciting as actually flying it we uh when we were heading to Iraq uh, it was crowded I can't remember how many people were on the plane but it was very crowded uncomfortable we had our full body armor on and all our bags I mean the bags were palletized but we did what was called zipper seating uh, well we, we sat zipper styled anyway uh, what that means is everybody on the plane had to interlock their legs with each other because they had people sitting in front of them. Definitely made the ride a lot more uncomfortable. Uh, I gotta do this quick. This glue's gonna dry before I can even put the piece on. Yep, there we go. Um, yeah, it's drying already. How the heck am I supposed to glue this if it dries so quickly? Maybe if I didn't have that hot light, it wouldn't be such a problem, but, um, and I had a, a woman next to me, and, I mean, overall, she did well on the flight. It was when we got to Iraq that became a problem for her, um, but before we got there, it was another woman that had to go to the bathroom in mid-flight, so she asked the loadmaster where the bathroom was, and he kind of jokingly, or not really jokingly, kind of smiled and pointed at the seat or at the wall and she kind of looked at him crazy and walked over the wall and looked around and looked back at him and he said pull the cord and she pulled the cord and a toilet folded out of the wall and that toilet's called a honey pot um and the honey pot is what it sounds like just a small little pot that hangs out of the wall of the c-130 for you to use Oh, it's getting windy out there. If I can hear that chime with my headphones on. Uh, for you to use when you go to the bathroom in the flight and it stores in. Because the plane is supposed to be a cargo plane too. So they need room for the cargo. And sometimes one thing, ooh, excuse me. One thing I learned in my career in the military is some you're you're just cargo. You're just an asset to the military. You're not you're not that special. So you get treated like that. And there's obviously people rightfully upset by such treatment. But that's why the people like that aren't actually suited for the military. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. It's just it's just the case. I mean you're not you're not an individual anymore. You're your US property working together as a unit and they Sometimes have to forego comfort to get the job. Oh, dude. That didn't work out well. Uh, forego comfort to get the job done. So the least of the worries is how comfortable you are in the airplane. They just, they know they need to get you from point A to point B as quickly and effectively as possible. And that's what they're going to do. Comfort, if they can make you comfortable, they will. But it's not going to be on their top priority. And it's hot under these lights. And I really 
really hope this fits in there like it should. Uh, this is going to be a nightmare. Do this quick before the glue dries. I'm getting it all over on the outside, so I'm going to have to do some sanding, I think. Let's try this again. I had it pretty well lined up, but then there was pieces slightly off, and I was trying to get it aligned. There we go. So that, not really. See, there you go. Like, I got it, but I did not. What was that? Oh, that's awesome. When the pieces came out. This is going off to a great start. I didn't think putting two fuselage pieces back together would be such a pain in the butt. Maybe I shouldn't have got the liquid glue. I should have just got the cement. I'm going to be overly generous with the glue this time. Make sure this piece stays in there and does not pop back out. Okay. Push it in there. And go ahead and let that dry. And we're going to quickly smother glue all over this thing. All through here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. Yeah, okay, you can kind of see what I'm doing. I got some of the paint on the inside of this one from the uh, cockpit piece, that wall, that little separator. Um, And hopefully by the time I'm done all this, the, uh, the glue for that landing gear piece will dry up. I'm not even going to roll. I'm surprised the other pieces then haven't fallen out. That's what just happened with that piece. And I'm sure if you guys got a better technique uh, technique of gluing something like this, please, please let me know because I'm actually a little paranoid about how I'm going to do this before the glue dries too much to where I can't put this thing together correctly and make sure it stays together. Um, There's nothing, I guess. Third time's the charm, and I almost knocked like everything off my desk as I tried to do this. Maybe I shouldn't be so aggressive. Put this thing together. Um, come on, there. Ooh, is that a good click or is that a bad click? Now, if it's a bad click, it's too late now. There we go. There we, okay. there we go. Here we go. I wonder if the... Oh, that's going to suck. I didn't think about the... Um, if the cargo ramp's going to be able to open. I'm going to say no. I hope not anyway. Because that's going to look horrible if it does. I'm just adding a little more glue in here. This is all learning experience, folks. Learning experience for you guys. Sense of uh, the military and how it functions. And a learning experience for me on how to properly model kit build. And the mountain glue all over this thing. Maybe it's not that big a deal that I got glue like everywhere like that, but it can and will bother me if it looks too trashy when I paint this thing. See, is this was this supposed to be 
Dude, dude. It was supposed to be all the way up to the front, wasn't it? glue this that well there we go or maybe this is the wrong glue altogether this is probably really stupid okay yep okay so we're gonna Kind of see if we can get glue to seep down. Good grief. Samsung's like, they vibrate so crazy. Like, okay, I'm gonna try to see if I can get glue down in here to at least keep this somewhat in place. I finally push it all the way in. Um, I'd rather not take, well, I mean, it looks like I can easily take this whole thing apart if I really wanted to. Alright. Not really what I wanted to do, but I did this to myself. Probably because I'm not using the right glue. That's probably not helping my case any at all. Or I'm not applying it correctly. I didn't really read. Print so tiny on this thing. Oh my word, Samsung. The vibrations. I don't need it. My phone's on silent for a reason. I don't need it to vibrate so loud I can hear it. It's like that episode from IT Crowd. But anyway, um, I kind of got distracted with this because of what's failing to happen and it's scaring me. Um, I had a. I, so she looked at the honeypot, which had no curtain, and looked at us, then looked back at the honeypot, then looked at the loadmaster, and then said, I can wait. And she elected to sit back down and wait till the flight o was over. But I have a feeling she was going to look. And she ended up regretting that decision because of what ended up happening later as we got to our final desti destination in uh, Iraq. We end up having to do what's called a combat landing. And that's when I'll show you in a minute once I make sure this is seated in all possible locations. Like right here, that piece. There we go. Um, yeah, we did what was called a combat landing. That looks horrible. Um, and then basically what happens is the plane, I took that out of frame, I'm sorry, but hopefully you can still see. Why is my camera off? You tell me it's not recording anymore? No, it's on. Is it still recording? It's still recording. My phone's just stupid. Um, anyway, it, the plane, literally flies sideways and just does this big corkscrew all the way down 
until it lands. So you're, we're flying sideways, spinning around in circles, and then one of the reasons that they do that is make it harder for the enemy to shoot us because we were landing in an active combat zone. Um, hold on a second. I want to make sure this, this is, in fact, still recording because I'm going to be very sad if it's not. It is. Okay. Just like I said, my phone's being retarded, and I can't see it anymore. Um, so I did that combat landing, and every, all, a lot of people were screaming. I was laughing um, for multiple reasons, one being nerves, and the other because I actually thought it was fun. I know that's probably not really something that somebody, a normal human being, would say it's fun, but it, it was fun. Um, oh, stupid thing. Okay, so we're going to read a little more. We're going to read about the MC-130 um, on that same article. And it says, on April 13th, an, M an MC-130 dropped the largest conventional bomb ever used in combat. The GBU-43B Massive Ordnance Air Blast, or MOAB, or also known as the mother of all bombs, on an Islamic State tunnel complex in Afghanistan, N Nagarar province the MC-130's crew released it from the rear cargo ramp using a drag chute a procedure that th dates back to before the Korean War indeed I'm sorry before the Korean War indeed the conflict is where the C-130 was born that conflict is where the C-130 was born during that war the Air Force recognized it had no airplane capable of airlifting combat troops over medium distance to short Astrid, okay, airfields in 1951. Boeing Douglas and Fairchild pres presented al alternative pr proposals, but ultimately the USAF chose Lockheed's design. Willis Hawkins, who would go on to design the Corona satellite, Polaris missile, and M1 Abrams tank, created the wing design and described the C-130 in a mere 110-page document. Compared to Lockheed's 2,500-page F-35 proposal, the C-130 write-up is a breezy read. All right, so we got that in. We're going ahead and we're going to, looks like we're going to glue some engine parts, four of them together. And once we're going to done, once we're done gluing those parts together, we're going to probably go ahead and call it on this video. So I need 486 parts, that's 26, and I believe the engine parts are right there, look at that, 486 parts, and then we're going to call it uh, on this video, it's already, it's going to be the longest one in the series, but I, I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to really ru rush these things if I want to do this right, I mean I've already kind of made mistakes, so, and we made it this far. Uh, let's go ahead and set that engine piece right there. Uh, go ahead and, and I'm going to tilt this camera up a little bit more so you guys can, there you go, get more of what I'm doing back here and I can actually hold it closer to me and see what I'm doing. But I figured if you're watching this video, you guys don't mind that they run a little long and maybe you're not even really watching. You're just listening to hear me talk and checking on my progress as I go. What was the other piece? So 80, 84s and 80s. There's two 80s? Maybe I'm not supposed to do all 84s. Oh, shoot. I'm cutting 85s and 86s. Oh, well, I'll just set them aside for the next video. I'm sure if I look at the next page, that's what we're going to be doing is the 85s. <laughs> So let's see, except I just cut them out of their place. Oh no, 85s and 88s. No, 85 and 86. Okay, so no, I, I, I'm good. And I need an 88. 88 is these front pieces right in here. Yeah, I'm basically essentially putting the engines together. And there's the 80. Fantastic. That thing's so tiny. Not looking forward to that. Not looking for that at all. Oops, don't actually cut the piece. There we go. I'm probably moving way too quick for any of this. 
Oh, see, like that. I just cut the piece instead of the tab. So one of the engines is gonna probably have a, a small little gap. Is it? Can I, how bad did I cut it? Can I glue that piece together? I could if I really wanted to. We're gonna test my steady hands real quick. Uh, where's the piece I cut? Uh, where did I cut said piece? It's right there. Come on. Yep, okay, I cut it right there. Let me wet this tip. Okay. Oh, did I just lose it? Nope, it's right there. Okay, again. Probably better use my fingers for this piece. Okay. It's not gonna be perfect, but at least it's back on there. So I'm gonna just let that sit and dry. We'll have one funny looking piece, but I'm sure yeah, because there's, there's another chunk of that piece right there. That's what I get for not paying attention. Should have noticed there's more resistance in cutting that piece than it should have been. All right, so we got all the pieces we need. Um, I want to see. I don't know how I'm going to trim this without cutting myself. It's a very tiny piece. But, yeah, that, that combat landing was actually a lot of fun. Um, I was probably one of the few that I actually thought it was fun. Uh, we, we are gluing all parts on this, so we need... An 86 and an 85 um, since I kind of got ambitious and I did not pin oh, I mean it should be easy one's got pegs one does not have pegs so there we go I'll say I did not pay attention put these two pieces together first I really don't care if I get glue on my hands go ahead and try to glue that piece but yeah, after we finish putting these edges together, we'll go ahead. These are only two. Oh crap. I'm thinking, yeah, I gotta do all four engines, don't I? These are only two of the four. Oh crap. You oh, know, my fingers are getting sticky. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna just clean the glue off this thing as best as I can. There we go. Right there. Uh, sand that down later. And that's almost one engine. Where's the piece that I broke? That's the piece I broke. We're going to see. Yeah, it's okay. Get that in here. These pieces do not look like anything like they do in the manual at all. Unless that was 80, right? Hmm. Okay, maybe I should take this piece out until I know how exactly this is supposed to go in. Uh, so the tabby part, which I think is the part that I cut off, goes in facing the engine like it's gonna go in oh, you can't see it's so tiny oh it's so warm in here patience is a virtue children you always remember that don't rush things like I am you're gonna end up like me the messed up Messed up engine. There we go. Okay. Okay. There we go. And slide that bad boy in there. We're definitely going to have to sand these pieces when I'm done. Alright, so. Yeah, I cut the left side of that piece. Let's go ahead and. Glue these pieces together. 
could be using tweezers. Probably would have been better if I did. But, oh well. Go ahead and glue the second half. I know this is what we would do in woodworking. You wouldn't glue just one. Oh, crap. One side of the wood, you would glue both sides to ensure that it bonds properly. Um, so I'm assuming it's the same principle for model kit building is you want to glue both pieces or both halves to ensure that it fits in there properly. Did I just lose that piece? There it is. This one doesn't fit in as well. I mean, it fits, but it doesn't look as flush as it should because I accidentally cut that piece, which looks like it would go. So we can just like slide that in there. Not really. No. I mean, I can, but it is very obvious that I messed that up. I mean, it's already obvious I messed it up. But there you go. The two twin turbo engines right there. Make it a quick cool, okay. focus. Maybe I just hold it like that instead. There you go. Let's show it over here. See which one picks them up a little better. So we're going to go ahead and put the front pieces on, on these two. And they're going to go like that. But it looks like I got a little piece to shave off. Or it's not going to be able to fit very flush. Should be too able to actually. So that piece goes there. I'm going to flip this upside down. Um, yeah, and but so yeah, I did use a C130 getting into a rack, but I did not have one getting out. We actually took a C17 Globemaster uh, into the uh, back home, back to. Uh, L U D and then from there we took a contracted commercial flight to Baltimore. So I quite literally for that deployment flew all the way around the world. It was kinda cool. I mean I don't know how many of my friends like can say that they've flown all the way around the world. And I mean, they definitely can't say they've seen the countries and places I've had. There you go. Look at that. Front of the engine. It's looking pretty good. I got two more of these to do after these two. So we'll go ahead and knock those out before I call it a night on the stream the video. We're already at it like an hour. So we'll we won't continue the story from here. Because if you guys have made it this long, I greatly appreciate it. And hope you enjoyed. Oh crap. Now I just saw a big streak of glue fall down the side of the, side of the engine. There we go. Um, but as I was saying, uh, I flew all the way around the world, got to fly on a C-17. I was in, when I was deployed, I was in the southern tip of Iraq. Like I said in our previous video, uh, it was close to the Ar Irani and Kuwaiti border. And and just showing you guys a close up on the engine. And I was there for four to five months. Um, maybe a little less than five, but it was definitely over four months. I'm going to go ahead and just twist these bad boys off. I was hoping to limit the stubs, but I got sand files that I can sand these down if I need to. And I got the exacto knife I can trim them. Excuse me. Sorry, I had some wings and pizza, so it's it's coming back to haunt me a little bit. Ooh, so this is not gonna be fun. So they got the pieces I need right there. So I'm gonna have to try a clip. And it, it's attached to the tab I need too. It's like they want me to screw this up. You know what? 
I'm gonna take the tweezers. And then, yeah, there we go. And there we go. I, I probably should do it. Should have done this video in two parts, but it is what it is. Not a whole lot I can do about it. I can. I can't really edit out any part. I could, but I don't think it would really make a whole lot of difference. The video is going to be long regardless. Uh, those are, yep, that's all the pieces. So we'll go ahead and get the two engine halves together. Which, now that we know exactly what we're doing, it shouldn't take as long. I mean, not like they took super long in the first place, but you know what I mean. It's not going to take long to put these things together. tape, glue, glue these halves together. Okay. Make sure I glue the right sides are right them facing the right way. Alright, we're gonna have some pretty stupid looking engines. Uh, more glue. Probably don't really need more glue. I just don't really want these pieces falling apart after I put this thing together. No, they did not manufacture this part correctly. There was a little, the tap, the gap for where the peg is supposed to slide in is broken or isn't completely sealed off, but you know, it's not a huge deal. All right, so I need to look at this carefully. The slant part, there we go. So that's the piece I need. And why does this engine look different from the others? It is different from the others. Oh well. Put my finger to place it where I need it and then use the tweezers to push it into place. Or not. The engines on this E130 should be exactly the same. So I don't get this. Did I jump the gun on this? I sure did. And these were 30s. 28 and 30. All right, before we get too carried away, let's pull that piece off. We did. Um, where? Where's the other engines? No. What the heck? Are these uh these are the back ends, aren't they? No. There is no back ends. It's just the front end. It, the engines, they do, they look different. I don't think these were manufactured properly. Back the way this thing looks. I actually don't have much longer to go on this thing. So maybe we might be able to finish assembling this by the next video. Ideally. Hopefully I won't have let the next video go as long. I don't, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do about this piece right here because it definitely does not fit where it's intended to go. Unless I got it backwards. Maybe I got it backwards. Let's turn on. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's, let's just put the other half together and see. If they both look the same then I know it's not a manufacturing defect, and that's just uh, how the pieces look. Oh, yeah, they look the same. Did I put it upside down? No. Okay. Get the other piece all glued up. Oh, my word, that stupid phone. It's going to drive me up the wall. Hopefully it doesn't. I don't know if it's going to get picked up by the mic or not. The vibrations. Everybody has to message me tonight. Everybody picks the most inopportune time to message too. See, it does look different. This is 8586 nacelle assembly, wing exhaust assembly. That's so weird. It doesn't mention putting the other engines together, and they're definitely labeled differently. 
Okay. So I probably put the wrong pieces together, but that's okay. We'll make do with what it is and clean it up as best as we can when we get to painting. So, oh my word, phone. I'm about to put it on the floor so I don't have to listen to it vibrate. Well, it's still, still hear it vibrate. See, and these are even shaped differently. They do not fit as well as the other pieces did their engine parts there we go that one fits a little better it still looks weird to me so we'll go ahead and put this piece in and just make do with what we can probably my friends yeah, I was supposed to be streaming tonight I still plan to once I'm done this video I'm probably just asking where I am because I'm taking... The, oh, look at that. Now now it's fitting in, like, perfectly. Just had to take a deep breath, I guess, and think this through. I'm going to put the uh, front pieces of the engines on. Get glue all over my fingers. Boy, do I have to use the bathroom. But, yeah, it... I love this aircraft despite how frustrating it is being right now, but it's it's a powerful aircraft. It's ugly looking, but it, it, it's it's functional. It does what it's supposed to do. It's a good looking plane. Uh, I highly recommend if you guys get an air show in your local area to go check them out. Uh, you might think it's just a boring cargo plane, but I prom uh, if you talk to the right people, they can tell you some really cool stories about these things. A little more exciting than my personal experience with the C-130. Because uh, I just, I mean, I had to do a combat landing, and I used it to get to and from location, but that that's the extent of my story. But there are definitely guys that have, or and women, have different experiences, more exciting experiences than I do in a C-130. The most exciting part was the combat landing. But all right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I'd really do appreciate you guys coming on by. I'm sorry this one's a long one. We got... We kind of accomplished a lot today. We got the fuselage together. Look at that. Look at that beauty right there. There's a gap. I saw the gap. Oh no, there's a gap. Uh, fuselage is together. The engines are together. Well, the nacelles are together. We still got to put the props on these bad boys. And that, that is about it i really hope you guys enjoy this and i look forward to seeing you in the next one let me know what you think of below i obviously you can tell in the second episode i already changed the format of the videos so it, you focus more on the model than you do the game and i plan to do this this is why i wanted better lighting to have better camera angles of it so well let me get this back into frame i'm sorry so i really hope you guys enjoy i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video let me know if you got any more suggestions or recommendations for the future videos until then have a good one.